expect that life will be easy. That is our expectation. We expect that life will be easy. We expect life to be simple. So when trouble comes, it hurts. It makes us afraid. But what did Jesus say in John chapter 16 and verse 33? What did he say, John 16 and verse 33? What did Jesus say? These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. The word of God says this next sentence very clearly. Listen to that next sentence. Virtually anything that I'm going to say to you today, I'd like you to listen with the ears of the Spirit. You know we have external ears, but we also have, an, we have inner ears, the ears of the Spirit. I'd like you to listen with the ears of the Spirit. This sentence, I need you to hear it with the ears of the Spirit and let it stay in here. The Word of God says, in the world. Other versions say, in this world, so that there's no mistaking what we're talking about. In this world, you will have tribulation. That is not a curse. That is just fact. Not only is it fact, it is truth. In this world, you will have tribulation. That is not a curse. If you say that anywhere where I come from, then... <laughs> says, in this world you will have tribulation. But Jesus goes on to say something very important. He says, but be of good cheer. Why? This is Jesus. That's why I said that name. Treasure that name. Because he overcame the world, you must overcome. That's the fact. That's what, that, that is what is not, or that is what is written among the words that you can see. The words that are not written in a way that you can see. I have overcome the world, he said, and because I have overcome, you must overcome. It's in the book of Acts, it says, if death could not hold him back, if death could not hold him in the grave, what can hold you down? That's my paraphrase. He said, in this world you will have tribulation, so when tribulation comes, we do not need to be afraid. We do not need to become anxious. He said, but, in other words, when tribulation comes, we should be of good cheer. One of the reasons it's important to make sure that we take part in as much as possible of what the church does is that it's everything that you hear that becomes a whole. Who was in the workers' meeting this morning when Pastor Evie preached? Did she say something? Boy, she said something. Tribulation. She talked about the particular tribulation of waiting. For the word at the end of her message applies to everyone who is here this morning. She said the wait is over. Amen. The time has come for fulfillment. Amen. Amen. You see, we can take trials and tribulations in our stride when we have the understanding that Jesus is right beside us. And as you again make sure that you open the ears of the inner man, I'm going to give you seven scriptures. One for every day of the week to remind you that Jesus is never more than a thought away. He's right by your side. No tribulation. No dryer can separate you from him. You know what it says in the book of Romans, what can separate us from the love of God? 
there the life, angelic power, principalities, powers, and so on and so forth. Let me give you these seven scriptures that will make it clear to your heart that he is always with you. He's never more than a thought away. I'd like you to write them down because we're not going to read all of them. Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 8 is one. Deuteronomy 31, 8, one for every day of the week. Deuteronomy 31, 8. Isaiah 41, verses 10 to 13. Isaiah 41, 10 to 13. Then Isaiah 43, 2 to 7. Isaiah 43, 2 to 7. And I recommend, I'm going to stop after those three and just say this. I recommend to you, if ever you're in a season of life like I have been at different times, in a season of life where your heart is full of pain and pressure, where you know that you're under tribulation, read the book of Isaiah. Just take the book of Isaiah from chapter 40 all the way through to chapter, all the way through to the end. Just take the book of Isaiah and start reading from chapter 40 all the way through to the end. You see, when you want to hear God talk about himself, you need to read the book of Isaiah. If you want to know God through the word, you need to read that book among others. You want to know Jesus, there's a gospel you need to read. It's written by the disciple who loved Jesus and who knew him better than any other one of the disciples. The, th the truths that he speaks in that gospel, they're deeper, wider, stronger. They show a knowledge of Jesus that none of the others show. You know what gospel I'm talking about? It's John. You want to know Jesus? Read the gospel of John. You want to know God? Read the book of Isaiah. Deuteronomy 31, 8, Isaiah 41, 10 to 13, Isaiah 43, 2 to 7, Matthew 11, 28. Many of us know this one by heart, Matthew 11, 28. And this one I want us to read from the Amplified Version. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5. I want us to read it from the Amplified Version of the Bible. Hebrews 13, 5. If anybody has the Amplified Version. Hebrews 13, 5. Hebrews 13, 5. I'm going to start from the B part of it. Because the A part says a lot of things that they're thinking about. But Hebrews 13, 5 in the B part says, in the Amplified, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not. I will not. I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake, nor let you down, relax my hold on you, assuredly not. That's the amplified version of that scripture, Hebrews 13, 5. If you ever needed an assurance that God is right there with you, Hebrews 13, 5b. 1 Peter 5, 7. 1 Peter 5, 7. I'd ask that we also look at that in the Amplified. 1 Peter 5, 7. That is the sixth one. 1 Peter 5, 7 from the Amplified. It says, casting the whole of your care, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all, on him. For he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. 1 Peter 5, 7. And the seventh one is a scripture my father gave me when I was going off to college. He bought a Bible, he marked it, and he handed it over to me. It's a scripture that we all know, I believe it's Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, the one that says this book of the law, and so on. 
That's the seventh one. What I said to us earlier about the fact and what the Word of God says that in this world we'll have tribulation makes what I really want to talk to us about this morning very important. Very, very important. Psalm 77. Psalm 77. I call this psalm my song in the night. That's actually one of the, one of, it's a phrase from this psalm. I call it my song in the night, and the reasons for that are too many to talk about right now. But it's a psalm to read when you're awake and you can't sleep for any reason. You see, Psalm 77 says in the verse 6, I'm going to read verses 6 to 12. Psalm 77 says, I call to remembrance my song in the night. I commune with my heart, and my spirit made diligent search. Will the Lord cast off forever? Will he be favorable no more? Is his mercy clean gone forever? Does his promise fail forevermore? These are questions my heart sometimes asks ask in the dead of the night. Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up his tender mercies? And the psalmist has written in there, Selah. We should take a pause and think about these things. And verse 10 is the one I really want to zero in on. And I said, this is my infirmity. Because this is the sickness of all mankind, perhaps especially me. This is my infirmity. But I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy words of old. I will meditate also of all thy work and talk of thy doings. What is this infirmity? What is this sickness of mankind? It is the infirmity of forgetting the good times and remembering only the bad. It is the sickness of focusing, forgetting answered prayers, <coughs> focusing only on our expectations. It's a sickness of mankind. It's the sickness that keeps us awake at night worrying and tossing and turning. It's a sickness that makes us anxious. It's a sickness that makes us irritable. It's a sickness that makes us so that people can't come near us. They talk to us and we're ah, like tigers or something. <coughs> the sickness of forgetting. And Psalm 77 says, I will remember. 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 And a great way of showing God that we remember is celebration. That's the title of my message this morning, celebration. A great way of showing God that that sickness hasn't pervaded all the way through our hearts. And there's still a part of us that recognizes his goodness, his grace and his mercy. A great way is celebration. Let's look at celebration by answering four questions. And from those four questions, we're going to segue into an examination of who or what we're celebrating in this season. And that's a discussion I will finish up next week. Four questions. And you're going to help me out here. Question number one, what is celebration? Question number one, what is celebration? Who wants to tell us what is celebration? Hello? Yes, God bless you. Celebration is rejoicing over uh, God's goodness. One moment, please. We only have a few minutes, so we have to be quick. So you'll handle the other side. Okay, so you'll handle. So meanwhile, please give that to her. What is celebration? 
rejoicing over God's goodness or acknowledging God's goodness and blessings in our lives. Amen. Thank you. That was wonderful. Acknowledging God's goodness. Celebrating His goodness in our lives. Any other meaning? Celebration. Yes. Ayolua. Yes. Celebration is a shout of jubilee. Amen. Celebration is a shout of jubilee. Amen. A shout of jubilee. That is excellent. One more. Who can tell us what celebration is? Yeah. Yes, what is celebration? Praise the Lord. It is the act of rejoicing over a desired achievement. Amen. The act of rejoicing over a desired achievement. Celebration. Let me give you the dictionary meaning. If we put all of these meanings that we got just now together. The dictionary meaning, number one, to take part. Don't put it back yet. To take part in special, enjoyable activities. That's what my sister said here. Said, you know, doing activities to show our, our appreciation for what God has done. She said, a shout. He said, I forget what immediately. But to take part in special, enjoyable activities in order to show that a particular occasion is important. Taking part in special, enjoyable activities in order to show that a particular occasion is important. Another definition is to express admiration and approval for something or someone, is to celebrate that person. And the third is to lead a religious ceremony. That's a different kind of understanding. But what we're focusing on right now is number one, to take part in special enjoyable activities in order to show that a particular occasion is important. And then question number two, what do we celebrate? Can we have some examples of the things that we celebrate? What do we celebrate? Put your hand up, you get the mic. <laughs> yes, please go ahead. And please go ahead. Celebrate my birthday. Birthdays, amen. Achievements. Achievements, amen. Yes, quickly, quickly, quickly. What else do we celebrate? Anniversaries. There's someone behind you. MFI is behind you. And undeserved things from God. Amen. Yeah. God's mercies. When God shows us mercy, we celebrate. We'll take two more. What do we celebrate? There's so many things we celebrate. It's interesting. We can't think of many. Breakthrough. Sorry? Breakthrough, breakthrough. Breakthrough. We celebrate breakthroughs. Amen. We celebrate breakthroughs. Yes. Celebrate that we are born again. Amen. We celebrate. Oh my goodness. I think that's the greatest celebration of all. Okay. Promotion. Promotion. And Staran is behind you. Um, please give that to Christina. Our life. We celebrate our life. That would be a lifelong celebration. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Um, we celebrate good life. We celebrate good life. Huh? Good, health. good health. Amen. We celebrate good health. Who's, if, is there anyone here who has ever celebrated good health? Put up your hand. If you've ever, you have. I've never celebrated good health. I mean, I've thanked God for it. I've da, 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 but celebrate good health. It hasn't happened before. One more. One. And he's been partial. Okay. Yes. Of childbirth. Of childbirth. Amen. When the child is born, we celebrate. Amen. So we celebrate achievements. Like we said, you know, if we have, if, if most of us here are, many of us here are Africans, most of us are Nigerians. If Nigeria had won the FIFA Cup, <laughs> that would, that we would have celebrated, right? So we celebrate achievements. We celebrate the Mama said commemorations, birthdays, right? We celebrate transitions. A person is born, a person dies, 
a person is leaving town, a person is leaving a job, we celebrate transitions, we're moving into a new house, we're moving out of an old house. We <laughs> celebrate, amen? And then there's some things that seem like little things. And this morning I'm talking to mother, father, future mother, future father. Remember we're talking about gratefulness to God. We're talking about never forgetting God's goodness. We're talking about turning our heart from that position where we're afraid of tribulations. And we refuse to remember that the Lord said in this world we'll have tribulations. Turning our heart from that position into the position where we remember to cast off the infirmity of mankind and thank Him. Remembering continually His goodness. Remembering all of the time His goodness. The little, little things. Somebody, health is not little though. Having good health is not little. But the little things that we celebrate. You know, every time one of my children brought home a, a card that is all A's from top to bottom, they would see me dance. That was my celebration. Oh my God, you know, they were standing the circle around me watching me dance. Straight A's. Celebrate. What are the little things that we could celebrate that we do not often celebrate? In a home, it's important to have, an, uh, to have a culture of celebration. I'm speaking to present mothers and fathers, future mothers and fathers. I'm talking to husbands, I'm talking to wives. It's important to create a culture of celebration in our homes. So we completed homework, or we completed our science project at last. <laughs> that is worthy of celebration, right? Oh yes, that is worthy of celebration. So there are things that we, uh, so and so didn't complain today. All throughout today, the person didn't complain. That is worthy of celebration. Amen? Amen. So we look for things to celebrate. Look for things. We look out for things to celebrate so that we can cast off that infirmity of man, that sickness, that mind sickness that we as human beings have. Question number three I'm going to answer straight off because I have 12 or 13 responses to it. Question number three is why do we celebrate? Why? Why do we celebrate? Number one is that celebrations bring people together. When there's a wedding, what happens? All your cousins you haven't seen in forever. That's where you get to see them, right? Friends you have not seen in a long while. Yesterday evening there was a memorial service here for the father of one of my friends. And her husband was saying thank you. He was, he was giving a thank you speech. And he looked at one of his friends who was there. It was like they hadn't seen each other in 20 years. Celebration brings people together. Celebration gets you out of your routine. Because when we celebrate, we stop. We stop that normal routine and do something special, right? Celebration makes you forget your troubles and be happy. When I go to Nigeria, my friends, when, when I say, the situation in Nigeria is such that there should be a revolution. My friends are like, which revolution? Friday, we party. Saturday, we party. <laughs> By the time we're done with the week, we've forgotten our troubles and we're happy. And we're going with the week. What revolution are you hoping will take place in Nigeria? You forget your goals and you're happy when you celebrate. Amen? Celebration gives us milestones for noting our progress. Some people do not like to celebrate their birthdays. It's good to celebrate your birthday. It gives you a milestone to remember. I know some people who have graduated and each time they've ever graduated, they don't go to the ceremony. Is there anybody here who's like that? They don't attend the ceremony. I saw somebody's hand half up. <laughs> Amen. No. Celebration. It gives us milestones for noting our progress. It builds memories. It serves as a reminder of our talents, of our abilities, our skills, and our persistence. 
Celebration motivates us to keep working towards our goals. Celebration builds resilience in us. If we celebrated every time we had an answered prayer, it would be more difficult to forget that that prayer was answered. It will become a milestone in our lives, one to which we can keep referring when it seems as if the answer to prayer is delayed. Celebration motivates us to keep working towards our goals. When you're promoted, you celebrate. You work towards another promotion because you enjoyed celebrating, right? I said it builds resilience. You know, when you celebrate, say you have a business, for instance, and you choose to celebrate, it positions your business correctly as a desirable company with which other people will like to associate. Celebration brings new people in contact with you. And these new people are often looking for ways to participate in what you have done successfully so far. They come with ideas to expand on what you have already achieved. Celebration reinforces success, the positive aspects of what you're doing. Celebration is contagious. When you celebrate those around you, unless they're jealous, ah, Lord help us, those around you want to share your success. When you celebrate, new ideas and opportunities come up. And the last one, celebration makes people ignore their prejudices and removes shyness. If you've ever noticed, around Christmas time, people who normally would not talk to you, for one reason or the other, whatever prejudice they have in their heart, they find it in their hearts to not only talk, to smile at you, to be combined, they may, be, they may go back to <laughs> the way they were tomorrow, but at Christmas time, they participate in the good cheer. Why? Because of the celebration. You see, when you fail to celebrate, what you're saying is that what you're doing is not particularly exciting. What you're saying is that it's not particularly important. The fourth question, how do we celebrate? I mentioned one, I said I used to celebrate. Celebrate straight is by dancing. So there are big ways in which you celebrate, and then there are tiny ways. As one of my daughters, much celebration goes on around food, you know? Yeah, one of my daughters, our celebration is, you know that thing in Costco where they, they put the ice cream and the, and the fruits together? I forget what it's called. Somebody knows what it is. Not the smoothies, the smoothie is the healthy one something. But it's the one that has the ice cream, but it tastes heavenly. It has the ice cream and, and the, the fruit together. We celebrate with that. Another daughter is Yogurt Land. We go to Yogurt Land where we celebrate. You know, one daughter, it's pounded yam. <laughs> so much of celebration is wound around food. And as we become more conscious of healthy choices, people don't like to always associate their celebrations with food, but celebrate whatever, whichever way, but celebrate, let's break that sickness, let's break that infirmity. How do we celebrate? Number one thing to do is to identify the cause for celebration. We have so many causes for celebration, many, many more causes for celebration than for sadness, many, many more. Identify the cause for celebration. Whether you're a husband or a wife, whether you're a father or a mother or a father, a mother to be, husband to be, wife to be. Please remember this because it will change your household. It will change the atmosphere. It will change the attitude in your household. If you choose to have an attitude of celebration, if you choose to remember, like it says in Psalm 77. So you identify the cause for celebration. Having identified this cause for celebration, you choose a time and you stop all routine. 